Hey there YouTubers. Alright, so I'm looking at the Z490 motherboard on the test bench. I know it looks like a disaster. Um, Try to focus on one thing though. So with these um, Z490s, H470s, and I do not believe any other ones uh, in the 10th gen Intel lineup, have a uh, 2x4 power supply plus a 1x4 or some people refer to that as a 1x8 and a 1x4. Now, I have my good old trusty EVGA 50BQ on it. And really what I want to show you is uh, today <laughs> I was uh, prepping one of my videos, looking through one of the manuals. And I saw that uh, you can actually power this, I believe, with 1x4. Alright, so... What does that do to you? Uh, we'll take a look inside of Intel's um, extreme tuning software and uh, see. That that assumes this even boots up, okay? So that'll be the first uh, aspect. Will it boot up? And what will we see? So I'm going to uh, at some point switch over to a screen recorder. I'm going to keep this camera going though so I have uh, continuous audio and hopefully I'll get everything to line up but uh, you know having this extra um, four pin really in in my opinion I believe that's you know for those of you that have the uh, K style chip right um, AMD calls it extreme overclocking I don't even know what Intel's calling it but uh, you know, the truth is the uh, CPU has got a TDP of 135 watts. Uh, my i7-10700 is only 65, right? So it does not need all uh, three of those. Now, there's this thing called the, uh, the power limits you can adjust in here. And some folks have said, oh, you can set it to uh, unlimited. Uh, me, I'm, you know, not going that far, but... Uh, that may be another situation where you uh, actually would want to have the 1x8 and the 1x4. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this thing turned on and see what happens. So um, I'm going to put the camera on the uh, CPU cooler. So if it starts spinning, you know something's happening. And okay, it looks good so far. Now there's easy debug. One thing I continue to forget to tell you guys about these ASRock motherboards and that cleared so let's go look at the screen all right so I'm gonna log in here real quick you guys don't need to see my password all right so we are inside Windows and uh, I'm gonna pull up the Intel extreme tuning utility so you guys can see that as soon as I find it on my desktop There it is. And this will load up in a second. Now, stupid me forgot to hit record on the camera again, so um, I have to do this through OBS this time. All right, so what do you see in here? You, um, I've added a couple things at the bottom. The... Uh, you see package temperature, which is a default in here. You see uh, recent minimum, max, and the average. So right now it's staying relatively cool. CPU utilization, that is um, pretty low at the moment. Obviously zero is pretty low. Oh, no, it's one. The moment I say something. So this pro program's probably using 1%. And then the core frequency. So you see there the uh, recent average. That's probably um, the average of all the multipliers. If you look in this area, you see the first and second cores are 48x. Then... Uh, 47 for third and fourth and the last four are 46 and if you were to average that out it would probably be um, somewhere 
greater than, uh, let's see here, I'm trying to do the math in my head. It's going to be somewhere between 46.5 and, and 47.5, probably 46.8. Um, so this is uh, one of those things that's good to know. And usually you only care about this when you're able to overclock, when you have a K-type chip. So we're going to run the uh, XTU benchmark. And this will uh, this will show us, you know, is this thing drawing a lot of power? And we'll also get an idea of what the temperature is going to get up to. Now, as far as I remember, I have not adjusted the power limits. Um, there's two in there that we can mess with, PL1 and PL2. And we'll see that in a moment. Once this benchmark's over and it's almost about done. Now I wish I knew what my previous bench was, 3291. Um, I probably should have ran uh, Cinebench R20 for y'all so you could see that. But um, you see the maximum process frequency 4.62, and the highest CPU temperature supposedly was 90 degrees Celsius. Um, that probably will not match what is down below. So one of those things, not sure why, but uh, some things are inconsistent. So, yeah, that's his recent max, 4.68. You would think it would have occurred during the test. Package temp, we got up to 87 down here versus the 90 it set up above. And you see the package TDP, one, well, sorry, back to core frequency. So, recent average 4.1. So it didn't really boost all the way up. So that might be a negative of not putting as much power on it. Uh, then you see average wattage. So the average is pretty good. And then the max with the uh, doing the benchmarks in the story. Let's go back to uh, this all control section. And now we're going to look at, oh, in the wrong area. We're going to look at the power limits. So Turbo Boost Power Max is, if we shine over here, PL1 limit, okay? And then Turbo Boost Short Power Max is going to be your PL2 limit. And so we have not messed with the defaults. Now, messing with the defaults probably will require you to have more power. So having a 1x4 is probably not going to cut it. That may be where you really you need that one by four, or excuse me, one by eight. And if you want to really go overboard with a different CPU, like a K-type CPU, then then that's when you're going to need the um, one by four and the one by eight. All right. So I hope you got something out of this. Um, I just kind of threw this together and wanted to show you that really that your computer will run if you so happen to get one of the cheapest power supplies. Um, I know I have a PVF 500 water at home that has a, a 1x4 only. So there you go, folks. Thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe.